more comfortable or uh let's uh like a comb. throw you kids in the water and see what you gosh <laughs> you know they're really comfortable cones are comfortable i meant comas you comas yeah i was flipping to something more comfortable like a coma oh man <laughs> That's right. We haven't done the theme song. Sure, but a chirp, time. chirp, chirp. But I think we have no theme song. I think we have a theme song. I've got no theme song. Clean up my glasses with my shirt. Oh, oh yeah. I have a microfiber shirt. Microfiber shirt for all your cleaning needs. Why are we getting beeped at the trunk? Oh, what? Oh my gosh! And I hit my I hit my phone. I mean, I hit my the keys. Uh oh. What? Keys go there. Keys, keys go there. Keys are going away. Huh. Welcome to Photographers in Cars. My totally unscripted. Just, my keys just drove away. <laughs> they did. They, oh. they, they slid down in an extreme demonstration of gravity. They did. They did. We're we're on a slope. We are. The, yes. The street yep. we're on is a slope. In front of us is the is uh, another perspective on our skyline. Yeah. San Diego downtown, the harbor, and all yeah. that, which uh, is kind of apropos. Yeah. Because yeah. we were talking about cliche shots. Yeah. You can't escape San are. Diego. Um, with a camera and not take a picture of our skyline. It's our cliche shot. But before we get to that, mm -hmm. my name, my name is Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scott. Or Tarzan. Or Tarzan, depending on um, <laughs> the day of the week. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So And we're photographers in cars. Yeah. Newest episode yet. Mm. Let's see. So, yeah, we were talking about, you know, or you've been on this ongoing search for a more unique perspective on mm -hmm. the skyline and got us talking about cliche photos. Um, you know, I think we all, yeah. we all take them, but so we talked about it more. There were like, um, kind of broke into a few categories of yep. cliche-ness and then how do you deal with it? And, you know, um, I guess maybe What's starting it? What with does cliche the, mean? What does cliche yeah, mean? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good, I guess maybe like done to the nth degree uh -huh. where everyone has taken that same photo right. or done that same thing or, you know, like, you know, like driving in the car with the top down and standing up and going woohoo or you know, on the Vegas strip uh -huh, or something. Like that. You know, things uh -huh. that I guess maybe it's almost like, almost, almost, almost like a rite of passage or, a, you know. It is. Uh, it's a rite of passage. But once you pass through that, you don't go back, circle around and then go through it again. When you do that, it becomes a cliche. Fair enough. Okay. And so the conundrum for the photographer mm -hmm. becomes, you know, either, you know, well, what do you do with the cliche? So, you, yeah. well, so what, what are cliche shots? Okay, you visit Paris. What's a cliche shot? I'm going to take a photo you, of the you Eiffel Tower. You have to. Yep. I'm going to go to uh, Pisa and pretend I'm holding up the tower because of the leaning thing. <laughs> um, fun little sidebar. You ever go to Pisa? Give everybody else high fives <laughs> as they're trying to hold up the, the yeah. tower. You know, so those types of things. Um, and you know, it's like, well, well what, do you, what do we do about that? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the travel one first. Um, at least in my opinion, the first thing I'm going to do is embrace the cliche. If it's the first time yeah. I've ever been to Paris or Pisa or I'm there with someone who is their first time, of course I'm mm -hmm. going to do that. Of course I'm going to take a photo of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And then after that, I'll maybe try to do something different with it. Uh, one of my favorite photos that I have of the Eiffel Tower, it's still relatively cliche. I'm mm -hmm. underneath it. Most of the tower is not visible. And it's just this, you know the four points of the bottom of it coming up into the frame and then just disappearing sure. into blackness. The other one I like is I actually took from Sacre Coeur where it's the big part of the Sacre Coeur, which is the main foreground element and way off in the distance is it's a like, teeny tiny yeah. Eiffel Tower. Yeah. So it kind of set context of, and it may not know what cathedral this thing is. Yeah. Oh, it's obviously in Paris. Mm -hmm. you know? So the Eiffel Tower because you see shot. Little... Yeah, we, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, Sacre Coeur you know. is uh, so. It's funny you bring that up because Sacre Coeur is also one of those cliche shots of. of it's Paris. a very well photographed yeah. building, and there's a reason for it. These things are yeah. nice; they're beautiful; they're great. To look. So how? Yeah. Okay, so you said that you you photograph Par the Eiffel Tower from Sacre Coeur. You don't you don't photograph the Eiffel Tower the way people normally would. How else would you would you do that? Uh -huh. Without the, without falling into the, the oh my the god, Eiffel Tower is a very tough one because it, is. it has been photographed so many times mm -hmm. from so many angles 
uh, it, it would, for me, I, I would guess I would break it down into whatever it is that's iconic. Yeah. Making that more contextual mm-hmm. and not the main subject. Um, mm. And how you go about doing that just depends on what you've got around. I got you. Um, one of my, actually one of my favorite shots, uh, it happens to be by Trey Ratcliffe. I know we were talking about him um, you know, processing wise, but he's got a photo where it's okay. The Eiffel Tower's there and everything, but it was just after a rain and there was this big long puddle along. So I guess it was like the, the Champ de Mars yeah. behind the Eiffel Tower. And that's reflecting the tower. I was like, and I had not seen that Ooh. before. He was the first guy I saw who had done that shot. I was like, Oh, that's different. You know, it's, I, I get it. It's the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. But it was a different take that I hadn't seen before. Um, you know, so the more you go and study, of course, the more you're going to find other options. Okay. Um, you know, I have a photo. So find took, different uh, perspectives on the same subject. I'm as, trying to, I'm trying to. Yeah, summarizing it that. to me. It's a, yeah, a different perspective on the subject or making the subject, making the iconic thing, not the subject yeah. in context for the shot. I've got one other photo of like the, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge but I took it from some little beachhead and the, the bridge is just off in the background. Okay. It's just kind of there. It's a beach shot. It's a seascape shot. The bridge happens to be there. So okay. you know what it is. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what I will try to do with the iconic. I'll take the, the cliche shot. I'll take the iconic one, especially if it's the first time I've gone. Oh yeah. You have, do you have take to the, I'll take the photo you have to. and then see if you can do something else with it. But I don't need, I don't need a hundred thousand of them. I just need you know, right. a few. Yeah. Unless you do time lapse, then well, but that becomes a different body of work. That actually is that actually is an interesting way to to do something different with. Yeah. It. So that um, so I was just in Paris, yeah. and um, I didn't take one photo of the Eiffel Tower. I you took, took seven hundred and fifty or something like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. because I get so tired of seeing the Eiffel Tower, I wanted to see the Eiffel Tower differently, and the way to do that would be to do time lapse. So that yeah. that, that was how I did it. The other, actually, that, that brings up another thought is when I, when I think of the time lapse, all right, stuff's moving around, things are different. The surround is changing. And so mm, the Eiffel Tower, yeah. again, this is a tough one because it's been shot so many times every season. But the weather for at least the yes. last season, that becomes something that changes. I mean, I'm looking at downtown and, okay, it's not going to be like this ever again it's not like particularly amazing because it's mid-afternoon yeah but there's different clouds up in the sky and there's you know other stuff going there's on there's potential you know so the the boats are going to be different depending on the day all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff so um okay this isn't something that i think the casual observer would notice sure. but if it's an icon or a scene that's near where you live no for sure looking and for different weather san diego yeah. is diverse it's uh, so we're photographers in san diego we have a lot of things to photograph um but I mean, the iconic shots around here are the downtown, the Coronado Bridge, Sunset Cliffs, Torrey Pines, mm-hmm. La Jolla Coastline, you know, uh, Balboa Park. Sure. And that leads me to my next one. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you'll get uh, you'll get clients that say, "Hey, I would I love your work. I would love for you to photograph me." And you're like, oh yeah, you're you're excited because you know yeah, it's yeah, nice to be yeah, I want to yeah. I want to photograph you. Nice to be Where would you want to go? What kind of field do you want? Oh well, we kind of want Babel Park. We kind of, and then at that point, you know, instead of going, oh my God, it's the 500th image of Balboa Park that I've ever done, you know, what I do to challenge myself is I try to, because uh, clients are, are you know clients are not cookie cutter. Clients are unique in their own way. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, you try to get their personality. Uh, you, you know, you, you try to get them. You try to place them in a part that I think um, mirrors that. So, say for instance, you have um, you have a client that super colorful. You're like, okay, well, mm-hmm. what is, uh, part of the things when I do my pictures, we, we hone in on location. We hone in on uh, the family, how many people I'm mm-hmm. photographing, um, uh, heights. That way, I can figure out framing and, and positioning. And then garments, the colors that they wear. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then if they're like, oh, yeah, we love color. We mm-hmm. love right. this. I'll place them on a – I'll place them in an area that is Balboa Park. It's iconic Balboa Park. Mm-hmm. But it complements what they're wearing. Sure. You know, say, for instance, they're, they're like, oh, we, we, we really dig that um, – but we're all just going to wear neutral colors. Well, then you're going to place them in an area with a bunch of mosaics, you know, if, if, if they like that contrast. So that, that's how I deal with it. Mm, I, okay. I see my clients and I see a part of Balboa Park that, um, that 
looks like it would complement them and we'll see and then if they have kids and you know if they have kids well i'll have them play around because there's like you know there's playgrounds over there and they can run around and then it, it becomes that we, we pull the balboa parkness out of it they say yeah. it, it becomes where yeah it's similar to what i was saying where where the icon becomes contextual it's yeah. not the main yeah. part of the photo and i guess the the trap that you're trying to avoid as someone who's doing portraits and families is not being like, okay, come here, stand here, there, sure. though, click, click, next, do this. Sure. Because that becomes, you know, um, draining for you mm -hmm. as an artist. You're like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just turning the crank over and over again. Yeah. I could just do this in a studio with a backdrop. You know, why do yeah. I, I you know, why, why do we need to go out? Green somewhere? screen this whole thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, making it about the person because the, the, yeah. the, the group or the family, because right. that's the thing that becomes the unique aspect. So right. they're, they're like the weather in my landscape sure. analogy. Yeah. So what are, what other hmm. cliche stuff do, do we come across? Um, oh, the beach. The beach so, shots. So that's interesting because the beach ones, because you mentioned La Jolla Coast for, you know, for, for San Diego and so forth. This, the thing that people are like, how can you go to La Jolla over and over? I know the rocks by like, I could give them names uh -huh. at this point. Your daughter knows that you take a picture of the same rock over and yeah, over she's again. she's like, hey, you take the same. <laughs> what changes is the mood of the surf. Yeah. And that's, you know, I mean, I mean, every single frame will be different. Sure. Um, yeah, not drastically different if you're mm -hmm. taking a hundred in the same afternoon. But yeah, the, the thing that changes there is the, the mood of the ocean, the way the water swirls. Yeah. That's going to be, you know, this, that's just chaos theory in action. Very true. Yeah. Very true. So it's funny because uh, uh, from the, we're talking cliches and then you talk a beach. Uh, when I get a client that reaches out to me and they're like, I would love to do a beach shot. I'm just waiting when I, when I go, okay, cool. I mean, what, what kind of clothes would you like to wear? I know what the response is going to be. They're like, Oh, I was just thinking we're all going to wear blue jeans and a white shirt. White shirts untucked. Yeah, untucked. Button down. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. And and and, I'm and just, then rolled up with the sleeves, two cuffs, uh -huh. yep. two cuffs on That's the pants. It. That's exactly. What, and then and, the, and then the, yeah, of course. And what I what I try to do is I try to show them that um, in anticipation for that email, I try to see them with well, instead of uh, I'll I'll say, hey, so what kind of clothes uh, would you like to wear? Um, we see oftentimes a lot of the families, they like to wear the blue jeans, the white shirt. What I want to do is I want to try to bring some of your personality out of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll I'll, I'll, um, I'll kind of angle them towards breaking them away from, okay, we're going to wear white and blue. Let's not do that. W what kind of photos can we do? We lost a camera. Yeah, we it's lost center? our center. Okay. That's oh. okay. So, well, so, yeah. so that's interesting though, um, because when it's client work, I don't do client work mm -hmm. like that. Um, the closest I have is someone who might come for a private workshop and they say, I want to do this. And sure. So, Great. We're going to go do that because uh, that's what you want. I'm going to you know, give you the, the best experience and you know, teach you whatever you need to know. For, for a family situation like that, will you entertain the option of a clothing change? Meaning like they really oh, yeah. are attached to, we really want this type of look for the photo because for whatever reason they, they're in love with it and they, they, they want to have that oh yeah you go do it and then yeah do something else and, and i've done that i've okay. done that okay. so they, they have a look and i'm not i don't dissuade them when if they're if they're super into that look i'm like okay i can recognize it and i'm like okay let's do that but i also want to see mm. accessorize let's let's bring things that break you out of the normal white white top blue bottom right so accessorize, and then uh, if we have time, let's put you guys in something more comfortable, or uh, let's uh, like a comb. throw you kids in the water and see what. You, gosh, <laughs> you know they're really comfortable. Cones are comfortable. I meant comas. You know, comas? You know, yeah, slip into something more comfortable, like a coma. Oh man, my gosh! <laughs> hey, dark humor. I, oh. I, I can't help myself. <laughs> but anyway, so you, uh, yeah, yeah. Af dark. After the after yeah. the the shots done, like let them go in the water and get. You yeah, know, nutty and messy yeah. and all that kind of thing. So it, it you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a different perspective hmm. again on, on the cliche shots. Our lights looking, I don't know. It looks like over downtown. I'm, we're what we can see. <laughs> our light, I was distracted. Huh? Yeah, our, our light over downtown is looking like it's, uh, it's shaping up to be. Well, it's way too early to know. Yeah, it's the gap in the clouds right at this moment. Yeah, but I'm I, actually surprised that it hasn't broken up by now. Usually, June gloom lets up in the early afternoon. Yeah. Unintentional rhyme. It's been it. It's been this guy, the rapper Scott, the rapper. I wow, introduce. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, a, I'm I'm actually a rapper with a W. I, 
cover thing. He's unsigned, guys. So if there's any uh, uh, record company, unsigned, yeah, exactly. If there's any record company looking for a brand new I rapper, don't know why? <laughs> I just can't understand why I haven't signed my. Oh, I just lost that. Camera. Oh, hey! Oh my God! <laughs> Hey. Yeah, well, we better wrap this show up. Yeah. Oh, like that segue. <laughs> now we have a nice close-up of your brain. Oh, that's right. The <laughs> only the working camera, camera we got left. has recorded me really close, banging my head into right. my steering wheel. Well, I'm going to go out, try to take yeah. a picture of what I, I'm so hoping So why don't we happens. get out there and get some cliche photos? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. See y'all.